Hello everyone, we are back. We are back with Season 3 of More Tales. And I finally decided to do a Season 3 um, for three reasons. Because I am, I want to show my gratitude for everyone who has supported me in this channel and who have said that they really like the War Tales content and want to see more play um, playthroughs. So that hence why that's for Season 3 is here. The other is because Shiro Games has released a community update 4 and they've actually made some changes to the classes. Made the, I guess, what they deem as other classes that are not as, not played as much, I guess, uh, a bit stronger and just balance things around a bit. So I'm keen to give that a go rather than just focus on Swordsman. And lastly, it's because I want to try the adaptive exploration mode as opposed to uh, region locked. So without further ado, let's get things started. Now, I am going to have a I'm going to place in three around a theme, and the theme is going to be based on the Straw Hat Pirates from One Piece, the Japanese comic book. So I'm going to try to match the characters in One Piece to the classes in War Tales. And the main protagonist in One Piece is Straw Hat, the Straw Hat Pirate, and that is Monkey D. Luffy. Now he fights mainly with his fists and his legs, but mainly melee, so I'm thinking the best for him would be a pug list. So, of these options here, um, the only one is really the shipwreck pirate crew. If you're looking, if you're seeing this option and you don't have it on your screen, uh, don't be alarmed. That's because I have the tavern DLC. That's why there's an extra starting option. But I really want to start with a pug list to always have Luffy from the beginning. So I'm gonna go with that. In terms of negatives, oh sorry, bonuses. I'm gonna go with because it's gonna be adaptive. Um, the extra experience doesn't really matter because the environments. Difficulty will scale with your level. I'd rather have critical damage. Yep. And then carrying capacity or suspicion meter. I'll probably go with suspicion meter. Depletes 5% slower. So for those who, who aren't familiar or uh, can't forgot what the differences are, so adaptive exploration, difficulty for, for, of all regions adapts dynamically to your group's size and your unit's power. The game will always offer a challenge suited to your troop. While in region locked exploration, um, each region has a set difficulty from the start. So region locked, the game kind of guides you through the regions they want you to complete in a particular order because of the difficulties. So you can't go to, for example, Drombach or Grinmere straight away. You could, but progress will be slow. Um, for me, I probably die straight away. But adaptive just means I can go whichever region I want to as long as I'm able to get through the border um, gates and, and enter the other region. So no restrictions. I can play however I want and that's kind of what I'm going to do with this season. Now, starting regions, there are three. There's Tiltron, Virtues, and County of Arthes. Again, if you only see one um, you, and you've just started the game, you'll only see one, sorry. Um, if you have completed a playthrough, which I have twice, you have more options. And I believe someone has commented and thank you for letting me know. If you play on Xbox, again, it's not you don't get three, I believe. You only get two, is my understanding. I'm playing on PC version, uh, hence why I see three. A combat difficulty, survival difficulty, so... Um, I'm going to go with Expert. Keep in line with this just because I'm changing it from region locked exploration to adaptive. I'll continue with the Iron Man safe mode and we'll call this Straw Hat Pirates. So, again, we're just going to change all the names to suit the characters in one piece and a little bit of, well, as much as I can to suit that. No, no, um, no facial hair. Yeah, he looks. Bit like Luffy, although he needs to look goofier. Uh, yeah, okay, that will do. I feel I need more first aid. Um, bloodthirsty, maybe Roth actually. Mm, okay. Um, for those who, again, who are new, you can choose a sec secondary positive trait, but if you do so, the game will make you choose a negative trait. You can choose random, but you have to have that. You then have to have a negative trait. So I always avoid that and I just go with one positive trait. I don't like the negative trait. Some of you might and that's completely fine. 
So anyone with an axe, uh, no one has an axe in one piece that's part of the original crew. But the one that's closest, I guess if I want to make the axe wielder a tanker, uh, it would be Frankie. So I'm just going to call him Frankie. Is it Frankie with a IE or Y? Let me quickly check. One piece, Frankie. Frankie with a Y. Okay, so Frankie. It's a cyborg. Well, he made himself into a cyborg. And then... Uh, that looks fine. We'll make him look a bit like an old man. Uh, Roth or... Oops, no, I want... Because he's going to be tanky, I need taunt. And then again, critical hit. Ranger, so I'm going to make him um, Sanji. So Sanji is also kind of melee. He uses his legs. And given a ranger is melee, that's the one closest to legs. I mean, we don't have someone that does mar martial arts in this War Tales. Not that I know of. Um, we could do run. Let's do run. That's fine. And archer. So the only one, obviously, to suit this would be Usopp. So Usopp uses a sling. Um, slingshot and... This is the closest, I guess, because Usopp is a sniper in the combi book and we've got an archer. Hopefully we'll make him a, more like a sniper. Um, Usopp's hair is kind of... I thought it was afro -y. Could be wrong. What would suit him? You know what? Let's make him this. And let's make his face. Yeah, that one. Fine. That would be fine. We're going to make it um, aim as the skill. Bloodthirsty. So I get all of them bloodthirsty. Okay, good. So let's start. Okay, at the beginning, at least your companions are still alive. That's more than they expected when the storm sank their ship, along with their dreams of piracy on the high seas. Now stuck on dry land, they've got all the time in the world to discover the joys of long day, day long hikes, wild beast attacks, hostile villagers, and more. But sailors are a resourceful lot. In time, they're sure to adapt and thrive. So before I continue, uh, I just want to explain that the way I'm approaching season three, is I'm giving myself preset victory and defeat conditions because War Tales is actually quite open-ended. There is no end to it. You can choose to just explore every single thing, do every single side quest. They do have rolling credits and the rolling credits is when you complete any of these paths. And that's what I'm going to do as a victory condition. If I hit the maximum level on any of these paths and complete the final quest or the final quest opens up and I can complete it, that would be the victory condition to say that the Straw Hat Pirates have succeeded in their adventures in War Tales. I'm not going to actively or purposefully pursue one path over the other. I'm just going to let it organically happen. And if it so happens we hit the maximum level, then we've won. What about defeat? Now, defeat will be if any of the Straw Hat Pirates crew dies. Okay, so if they ca captured in prison, that's fine. Although, I don't know if they fixed this bug. In Season 2, what happened was I sent a lot of criminals to jail. At the same time, I was also actually stealing a lot, trying to pursue this crime and chaos um, path to increase this path level. And I got caught. So one of my supervillains, so Season 2 was based around the League of Supervillains, they got caught and got sent to jail. Now, because I already sent so many villains or criminals to jail, the jail was full. So the supervillain had nowhere to go and somehow just disappeared off the face of the earth in War Tales. And so it just went missing. So if, if that were to happen as well, then this would be a defeat in a defeat condition. Okay, so those are the two things. Those are the two criteria I've set for myself. I'm also going to try to keep the party small. Uh, I'm going to have these four and I'm going to look for two more characters. One is Zoro, Roro no Zoro, who's going to be a swordsman. And then the other is going to be Nami. Nami uses a staff, wields a staff, and the closest I can find is a spearman or a spearwoman. So if we can find one, perfect. Uh, that's it. I'm not going to try to look for... Um, oh, what's his name? The little bear dude, or reindeer dude. Choppy. Chopper. Chopper. Um, 
if I do, it's going to be an animal, maybe a bear or something. So let's get started. We'll keep this a short episode as our first episode, and then we'll really dive into it from episode two onwards. But I would appreciate if you let me know what you think. Um, what do you think this? What do you think about this theme, Stride Pirates, um, and what you like to see in season three? Okay, you got two here. Mm, I need you to go here. Okay, so let's entertain you. Can you get to? Okay, you can. Luffy, you can. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then we will go here. Ah! Never mind. That was too hard. Ouch. I don't like your poisons. I really don't. Wonderful. Oh, I forgot to do something that I advise everyone to do in there. In the beginner's guide. Oh. And that is to equip the tinkerer's profession. I forgot. I got too excited to start season 3. Not a good excuse, but uh, excuse nonetheless. Mm hmm. We could go here. Yeah, let's just smash him. The gore. The glory. Frankie made the first kill. Oh, I should have been Luffy. Captain. Captain Luffy. Ouch. Stop it. Mm, coming for you. Sanji's gonna help the captain out. Um, let's just get Frankie to hit from behind. Oops. Wow. Critical hit. Okay. Uh, Usopp can level up. Let's see if it's desirable. Oh, good. Uh, what I mean by desirable is in this compendium, you can, when you get knowledge points, you can use career plans. And career plans basically allows you to spend influence points to dictate how you want when they level up, which aptitude point you actually want to level up. Because as you can see here, I'm lucky. Um, War Tales has defaulted to giving me two attribute points for critical hit, which is what I want. It could be that it could have been, let's say, two attribute points to Constitution, which I didn't don't want. Career Plans allows me to then change it to add, make it so that it's two points to Critical Hit instead of to Constitution. But in this case, because it's perfectly fine, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go with Valorous, I think. Maybe Valorous Chain, I don't know. We'll just go with, uh, yeah, we'll go with Valorous Chain for now. See what that does. Okay, uh, let's get this. Oh, and the reason why I want to start in Tiltrin, I forgot to explain that. I'm forgetting so many things. Let's equip this Tinkerer profession first. Um, so the reason why is because I have the Tavern DLC. And the first Tavern location will be in Stromkart, which is in Tiltrin. So I, I want that because... For me, the benefit of the Tavern DLC is it really allows me to survive better on higher difficulties. It will give me free food. I'll show you when we establish the Tavern. And it will also allow me to earn passive income, which is great. Let's rest here. Um, we want... What's up to be our tinkerer? Can you make anything yet? Let's make some... We don't need lockpicks necessarily, but we'll get um, one fish hook right now. We will need to fish to get some food. A knowledge point. So we're going to learn run, so I can run quicker. And we'll now eat and be merry. Okay, uh, three happiness, and we have gained the, the following bonus, maximum valor point increased by one, so we've got six, gained two valor points. Excuse by the all -seeing he wants to go to Stromkart, which is where we're going, so it's completely fine. Let's run.
Okay, so we're going to do a few things. Uh, we're going to drop him off first, get our 15 crowns. Thank you for bringing me back to I'll always keep you in my and then we're going to let this dude steal from us. A few crowns, I can polish your he wants to polish shoe, but he's going to run off with the money. Thank you for all the money. We're going to find him later, don't worry. Those refugees. I um, no. Nope. I'd love to buy some food. Now, you, you can if you want... Um, I start stealing I I just choose not to I have because of Terran DLC I, I will have enough food um, but if you don't have Terran DLC sometimes stealing food is a way if you don't have enough crowns just try not to get your wanted level above 100 because then the guards may start looking for you that'll be my recommendation okay so that's done let's go to this and we'll unlock the blacksmith we will I don't think I have materials to craft anything do I let me check uh, you can check on compendium yeah I need three leather or one leather I wonder if I can buy it, it might be worth buying what I'm gonna do is get him to repair first um, I'm gonna keep this for now I may need it go to the apothecary unlock the herbalist or alchemist profession and then I'm going to go to the Traveler's Inn and pick up all my quests. Okay, up oh, a drunkards. They're all the same location. Awesome. Okay, that's near the mine that I want to go to. The mine, uh, a couple of things as well. Iron ore. Mm, okay, that's fine. Now the informant. You can buy these. This information. Basically, they're story quests. Uh, story missions and you use influence points it's 50 each I have none I only got 28 so I'm just I just don't want the purple border so that's why I just clicked on him to interact don't forget you can buy recipes here too awesome apple pancakes are massively useful uh, reduce the speed at which your troops fatigue stacks by 30% so basically it's good you get to travel 30% more uh, and then you don't have to pay Wages as often, and you don't have to feed them as often as well. Um, oh, Spearman, Spearwoman, she's perfect. But she's scrawny. She would have been perfect as Nami, but I, I, I have no money, guys. Ah oh, man, can you give me a discount? I need two influence points. Nope, don't need you. If you get a swordy, uh, no, spearman. I mean, Nami shouldn't have a mustache, but who knows? He has better traits. Okay, uh, last one. Wait, let me see if I can get some leather. We might sell some leather. Oh, yes, he's got one. Okay, let's get one. Should we steal one? Let's see. If we get someone a temporary to steal, Sanji... So, I did say I don't want to, but I'm trying to save my crowns for a moment. Ooh, there's a chance I might get wanted. You know what? I only need one, so I'll just take one. Yep, that should be fine. Oops, uh, wrong place. My bad. So, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to make... Um, Luffy, Frankie maybe? Uh, who should I make? I actually want Zoro to be the blacksmith, but that's okay. Temporarily we get Frankie to be the blacksmith. Because I'm going to have a small party, small crew, uh, pirate crew. So I can't, there's no way I can assign or have one for each profession. There are 11 professions. I'm not going to have 11 people. It's only going to give me six with Nami and, and Zoro coming on board. So I'm going to have to keep swapping them around from one profession to another. There are some professions I just want to keep with one um, pirate crew member. I'm using that term because they're the Straw Hat Pirates. Uh, because I don't want to give up the experience points. And there are some I just need to get them at a higher level to gain access. So blacksmith, it means you can craft higher level equipment. Um, for miners, you can then get more materials from nodes that you mine. So those are the couple of things that I, I really want to maintain and not lose out on the experience points. 
Okay, Tarsh. So if you get the Tarsh. Or Rags. Rags better, right? I reckon Rags. I need to buy two more leather. Let me go buy two more. So the reason why I'm spending, if you see in my previous seasons, season one and two, I didn't go down this route of trying to buy materials. I, I pretty much hoarded a lot of things and found my own materials. And before I continue talking, let me get this mini game done first. Oh no, crap! See, uh, yep. Yeah. So the reason I'm doing this is, I'm I'm thinking in adaptive difficulty or exploration difficulty. You. Let me give this, yeah, that way. Um, because your enemies will, will adapt dynamically to your your level and your troop size, you can't overwhelm them with uh, how many, you know, with a lot of companions. They will just have the equal number, if not more. You can't overwhelm them with your levels either, again, because they will conform to your power. So the only thing for me, I think, I'm testing this out is the equipment that you have you have to ensure you have the best equipment because that's the only leverage you have over them they will always have the same equipment in terms of levels um it's not like they will suddenly be wearing rags if you are wearing rags so yeah that that's my my theory oh wait i'm supposed to go back and create my tyrant but i just want to catch this guy he stole from us yeah i got my 20 crowns back but i'm gonna kill him get some experience as well easy experience I hope okay um, can we just shoot him oh nice we'll get Luffy to finish him off unlock the trait glorious let's have a look at that Loot, just not his body. Um, Luffy, glorious. One valor point at the end of their turn. Chance to generate. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Strum Cup. I forgot to establish my tavern. That's the whole point. I saw it in Tiltron. So there's Derelict Tavern. When you have the Tavern DLC, you can establish your own tavern. You don't need money to establish it at all. You just need uh, one crown. So we'll do that. And. Just clear all the cobwebs, repair the table, wood, destroy the wood. We need a wood cutter. So I clicked into it because every time you want a new profession, you have to click on the interactable to unlock it first. Um, so let's destroy this now. Get some wood. Two, three, it's five mini games, four, and five. There we go, we've got one wood. That's fine, it's free. And let's get started. We'll call this, um, I don't know, what should we call it? Uh, okay, we'll call it, uh, we'll call it One Piece. <laughs> call it One Piece. One Piece, and, okay, so, we, I'm pretty sure we do have some equipment, uh, some furniture, so we'll place that here. We've got some torch, place that here. And then we will hire some people. Now, just a tip, uh, you can see all the other employee types, like a bouncer, a thief, and also a tavern keeper. But if I hover over Renano, for example, you can only see that he can cook. But if you hit your hold your shift key, you can see that he can also be a tavern keeper and bouncer, and those are the specialties, effectiveness, and every other attribute he brings. Um, to that role should you assign him to the other roles if you want to now i will choose first i need a proper they're all the same so let's get the two cooks wait let me check my menu uh, let's get one first let's get one first let's get him oops sorry and then we'll assign him as the cook we'll check the menu okay good they're all so your promotions these are means the ingredients are cheaper so any recipes using those ingredients you get a higher profit margin and if it's in shortages you get a lower profit margin so i can still cook those two two more slots so let me hire one more cook 
and there we go and between the three of you who's going to be a better tavern keeper they all are the same so let's go with you make you my tavern keeper and we want a brewer as well so get a brewer there we go all done and just finish this up okay so reason why i like tavern dlc and how it complements my early gameplay is for the specialty recipe so in this case it's the alchemist creme brulee that's the one you always unlock at the beginning if you read the descriptor at the right i can't move the mouse otherwise the box disappears when a specialty is prepared at the tavern a serving set aside for the troop at each rest a tavern specialty is its trademark and only one kind can be served at a time so two key things here from the description when the specialty is prepared at the tavern so basically having it just on your menu a serving is set aside for the troop at each rest so every time you rest in the real world your exploring world if i can call it that you get a serving of this so you get free food every rest so this really helps in your early survival and i find it really really handy because for me if you watch season two the earlier game um i spent more time trying to find food to make sure i'm keeping my troops well fed but this really does help i'll show you when we actually rest um that we actually do get a, a serving of creme brulee now let's maximize how many tables we have and we'll order three because we have 200 copper coins oh i forgot to mention it's a different currency copper coins for the tavern and in the real world it's crowns but you can exchange as you can see in the description it can be exchanged for crowns and we'll, sh we'll come to that once we've done one shift i'll show you that as well but if you don't want to hear me ramble on in this one uh, feel free to check out my uh, war tales tavern dlc guide it will have information on that let's get a couple of torches Ooh, wall torches just to make the ambience a little bit better okay all set up so that's it for the tavern okay so where are we gonna go we are i want to hit the mine um and maybe complete one quest and actually hmm, maybe we'll leave that for the next episode i did say i did promise this was going to be a short introductory episode so let's let's leave it at that and We'll come back and actually start our adventure properly in episode 2. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed the theme for season 3. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.